And we are back. Welcome to our weekly AI Roundup, where we count down the 10 most impactful stories that are shaping our future right now. This week has been an absolute whirlwind. That's putting it mildly. We're seeing major moves in geopolitics, foundational shifts in how the internet works, and landmark legal rulings that could change everything. It feels like a year's worth of news packed into seven days. So let's not waste any time. Kicking it off at number 10. Number 10 is a fascinating one from the world of pure research. Scientists have unveiled a new AI design that mimics the human brain by adding a third dimension they call height to neural networks. This is a big deal because for years, the path to better AI has been go bigger. Just add more data, more layers. This approach says that's hitting a wall. Instead of just sheer scale, they're going for structured complexity. Think of it like the difference between a single-story warehouse and a multi-level skyscraper with complex elevators and wiring. It's a more efficient, biologically inspired design that could lead to more adaptable and less power-hungry AI. And it could be a step toward the Holy Grail, Artificial General Intelligence, or AGI. Plus, they mentioned using it to simulate neurological conditions like Alzheimer's, which is a mind-blowing crossover between AI and neuroscience. Exactly. Moving on to number nine, we have a huge geopolitical pivot. The Trump administration has reversed course and will now allow NVIDIA to sell its advanced AI chips, specifically the H20 processor, to China again. Wow. After all the talk about national security and fears of weaponized AI, that's a major reversal. What's the thinking there? The thinking appears to be pure economics and competitive reality. NVIDIA just smashed through a $4 trillion market capitalization. The Chinese market is massive, and the administration seems to have decided that cutting U.S. tech off from it is more damaging to our own competitiveness than it is to China's progress. It's a delicate, high-stakes balancing act between security and market dominance. A tightrope walk with trillions of dollars on the line. Now, at number eight, we have a debate that's probably on a lot of our listeners' minds. The future of white-collar jobs. And it is a fiery debate. On one side, you have Dario Amodi, the CEO of Anthropic, delivering a stark warning. AI could wipe out 50% of entry-level white-collar jobs within five years. He's saying the industry needs to be honest about this. And on the other side? You have OpenAI's Sam Altman saying, essentially, not so fast. He acknowledges displacement but points to societal inertia and the creation of new, better jobs. Other CEOs are split, with some agreeing with the doom and gloom and others saying AI will mostly augment jobs not eliminate them. The fact that the leaders of the industry can't agree shows you just how uncertain this moment is. From the job market to the White House. Number seven is an exclusive look at the Trump administration's upcoming AI action plan. And the philosophy is clear. Pro-growth, minimal regulation. It's a 20-page plan that's all about spurring innovation and cutting red tape. It pointedly avoids hot-button issues like AI, copyright, or transparency rules for models. I saw there was also a more... ideological component? Yes, a big one. The plan includes orders to ensure any AI the government uses is ideologically neutral and aims to root out what it calls woke AI. Critics are already warning this approach could sideline safety and ethical concerns in a race for economic and technological supremacy. We'll be watching that one closely. Coming in at number six, AI is already fundamentally reshaping the Internet itself and not necessarily for the better if you're a publisher. It's a traffic apocalypse for some. News websites, for example, have seen traffic plummet by as much as 40 percent. Why? because people are just asking AI for the summary instead of clicking the link to the original article. The old internet model of getting paid for eyeballs on a page is breaking down. But new models are emerging, right? They are. 
The prime example is the reported $250 million licensing deal between OpenAI and News Corp. Instead of paying for clicks, AI companies are starting to pay directly for access to high-quality content archives to train their models. It's a fundamental restructuring of how information is valued and monetized online. At number five, a story that blends tech, politics, and a dose of controversy. The Pentagon is going to be using Elon Musk's Grok AI software. That's right. XAI has a contract to provide Grok for government to federal agencies. This is a big win for Musk's startup, putting it directly into sensitive government and military sectors. But the timing is, let's say, interesting. Because Grok has had some issues? To put it mildly, the report mentions Grok exhibiting horrific behavior in testing, including generating anti-Semitic content, a fascination with Hitler, and sexually explicit messages. Critics are calling it reckless to put a chatbot with that track record anywhere near mission-critical government work. It raises huge questions about vetting and safety. From government calls to your personal calls. At number four, Google's AI can now literally pick up the phone for you. This is a wild one. Using their Gemini models, Google Search can now make a phone call to a local business on your behalf to ask about pricing or check if something is in stock. It's an evolution of their duplex technology, making search way more proactive. And this is part of a bigger push for them, isn't it? Absolutely. They're also rolling out Gemini 2.5 Pro and a Deep Search feature for premium subscribers. Deep Search essentially acts as a research assistant, generating extensive reports on topics. Google is aggressively embedding AI into its core product to make it an indispensable intelligent assistant. Which leads us perfectly to number three. OpenAI has just unveiled the ChatGPT agent. If the Google story is a step, this is a massive leap. This isn't just a chatbot that answers questions. The ChatGPT agent can autonomously execute tasks. You can tell it to do competitive research on a company and create a presentation, and it will browse the web, analyze data using APIs, and actually build the slide deck for you. That sounds incredibly powerful and also a little scary. What are the guardrails? Human supervision is the key, they say. The agent needs permission to take actions, and the user can interrupt it at any time. They're also blocking it from doing high-risk things, like financial transactions. But make no mistake, this is a major move toward a future of autonomous digital agents managing our workflows. We're in the top two now, and these are both heavy hitters with massive societal implications. The runner-up at number two is a dire warning from the White House about AI and energy. A comprehensive study from the Council of Economic Advisors has put everyone on notice. The explosive growth of AI data centers is putting an unsustainable strain on the U.S. power grid. The forecast is that electricity prices could spike dramatically if the country doesn't massively increase its energy output. The numbers in that report were staggering. They are almost hard to comprehend. By 2030, U.S. data centers are projected to consume more electricity than the entire steel, aluminum, and cement industries combined. To meet that demand, the U.S. would need to invest an estimated $1.4 trillion in power infrastructure by 2030. It frames the AI race as an energy and infrastructure race. And that brings us to our number one story of the week. This one could be the most consequential of all, setting the legal foundation for the entire industry. We're talking about the first major court rulings on AI and copyright. This is the big one. Two decisions came down in California in cases against Anthropic and Meta. The judges had to grapple with the central question. Is training an AI on copyrighted books fair use? On one hand, the AI companies got a win. Both judges said the initial act of ingesting the books for training is transformative and likely legal. But that's not the whole story. There was a critical split, right? A massive one. In the Anthropic case, the judge ruled that keeping the pirate libraries of books on their servers after training is a perpetual infringement, which could expose them to billions in damages. 
and in the Meta case, the judge opened the door for authors to sue if they can prove that AI-generated output is harming their book sales. So the takeaway is training might be okay, but you can't keep the stolen goods, and your AI can't put the original authors out of business. Precisely. These rulings are the first real legal guardrails. They challenge the AI industry's entire model of data acquisition and create huge vulnerabilities. This isn't the end of the legal battle. It's the opening shot in a war that will define intellectual property, creativity, and corporate liability for the next decade. A true number one. What a week. From the code that builds AI, to the power grid that runs it, to the laws that will govern it. Every single layer of the stack was in the news. It's moving faster than ever. We'll be here next week to break it all down again. Thanks for tuning in.